we are going in the wrong direction. Uh, we are in deep trouble, whether it's inflation, the border, immigration. Gosh, you can't even find baby formula. And then you throw in CRT in our schools. You look at the energy independence. We're bu bu buying oil from Venezuela, Iran, and Russia. What are you kidding me? And joining us now is former Massachusetts Senator and U.S. Ambassador to New Zealand, Scott Brown, well remembered by this particular car enthusiast as the guy who ran his campaign out of a handsome old pickup truck. Welcome to Centerpoint, Senator. Hey, it's great to be on. Good to see you and a uh, good day to you and your viewers. Let's just start with this Pennsylvania race and, and the present real CP uh, scored. We got Matt Oz at 26 percent, Kathy Barnett, 23.4 percent, David McCormick at 19.6 percent. Who's going to win this race? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm, I'm not a big poll person, as if you recall, because I know that you, you uh, were from Massachusetts and uh, have relatives here that I was down 41 points and ended up winning by seven and the polls had them all wrong. Uh, but uh, they do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, polling on these races and it is going to be very, very close. I think Barnett, is, as you can see, is coming on strong. Does she have enough to peak at the right time and, and put her over the top? I'm not sure. Uh, will the endorsement of President Trump for Oz be the, the, the thing that puts him over the top? It's hard to say. You have a lot of folks that respectfully don't like the president or don't like Oz or don't think he's qualified. And then you have McCormick, you know, another qualified person. I don't think they've run, he and Oz have run the, the, the best campaigns in the world. But, uh, you know, the energy, I think, is on Barnett's side. And because you have so many other people in the, in the back end, you know, it's going to be a very, very close election. And I would suggest to the people that are listening, their supporters, that they better, better stay on the phones until the polls close. And if there's people in line, get on the phone to the to the attorney general or secretary of state, say, hey, keep these polls open until the line's over. I mean, that's the key to winning any election. Yeah, I suspect a lot of lawyers are watching very, very closely what happens over the next 12 hours or so. Uh, you know, Pennsylvania has a, a really interesting tradition, Pennsylvania voters, of electing pretty much centrist, I mean, either Republican moderates or, or Democratic moderates, people who sort of gravitate towards the center. But in this particular primary, all of the top three candidates, Oz, Barnett and McCormick, are, are outsiders to some degree. And there's a, so there's a bit of a wild card factor in here, is there not? Yeah, of course. Uh, and and you'll, that's a, the reason they're outsiders, because people who are just so fed up with the direction of our country. I know it's I know it's going to come to a shock to your viewers, but we are going in the wrong direction. Uh, we are in deep trouble, whether it's inflation, the border, immigration. Gosh, you can't even find baby formula. And then you throw in CRT in our schools. You look at the energy independence. We're bu bu buying oil from Venezuela, Iran and Russia. What, are you kidding me? And then you throw in the miscalculations on all of our foreign policy. So, yes, of course, you're going to have outsiders, people who have been in, in many instances, as you're seeing in Pennsylvania, who have already made their their livings. They want to give something back. They feel compelled to run. And, and it's I think it's great. It's part of democracy. And it's what our founding fathers wanted is is people to go in there, do their jobs and, and get home, not these career lifelong politicians, 50, 60 years, you know, so beholden to the special interests in their in their party's interests and not the people's interests. So, you know, it's, it's going to be very, very interesting, not only in this race, but in North Carolina and then all the congressional races and Senate races moving forward. Mm -hmm. So hold on to your hats, everybody. Yeah. Well, all these factors which you cite is, is leading to us moving in the wrong direction is, is in some ways a coalition breaker. All the traditional rules are out, I would I would think. Well, we're not moving in the wrong direction. We are in the wrong direction. Everything is so upside down. I feel like I'm in upside down land. I mean, I served for four years in New Zealand and came back to a very, very different country. And I told you earlier, to the point where my wife is even running for Congress, and she's a 30-year journalist, so that's how upset she is. So you look at what's happening when I came home $1.72 for gas, you know, with your Costco or BJ's card. And now I just paid, uh, driving over here, four seventy nine a gallon. Diesel in New Hampshire is the highest it's ever been. So what does that mean? That means the bacon that we used to buy for two eighty nine, I do all the shopping, two eighty nine a pound is now up to six ninety nine a pound, and it's not really a pound. And then to fill your oil tank, it's out of sight. It's fifteen hundred dollars versus the three or four five hundred dollars maybe that it used to be. Listen, we are in a wrong direction. Our allies don't trust us. Our foes don't fear us. What's happening in Ukraine? It's once again one step behind. And you know, respectfully, the president is is not really in touch with what's happening. And, uh, you know, he needs to get more involved and, he, and respectfully he can't. And you know, on the subject of, of the...
On the subject of the economy, I, I want to get to this uh, competitiveness coalition, which uh, you are uh, the chair of. It's a group of 16 conservative organizations focused on stopping some of the left's efforts to pass legislation that would hamstring American success in the future. And you're specifically mentioning uh, the People's Republic of China as one of these threats. What does your organization do? Well, first of all, thank you for referencing that. You can go to competitivenesscoalition.com to learn more. Yeah, there are 16 groups, the uh, National Taxpayers Union, you got uh, Freedom Works, uh, Americans for Prosperity. You have many groups who care very deeply about the direction of our country. And so what does the government do when there's something successful? They want to control it. They want to stop it. They want to prohibit you from moving forward. Now, this is not about censorship. So when you think about high tech and says, oh, yeah, we got to get on the censorship train. Listen, that's a very serious issue, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about startup companies, uh, young uh, entrepreneurs who are looking to compete in a global basis against Huawei. I just saw the sign for Huawei there and other Chinese companies. Because guess what? If we pass these, these, these pieces of legislation that Amy Klobuchar, who's running for president, Elizabeth Warren, who's running for president, and, and guess what? You have a situation where the Commerce Secretary and the Justice Department for Biden are already endorsing a bill that's not even written because they want more control of an industry. They want an, another opportunity to stifle business and put us in the wrong direction. Well, guess what? China would love this. It would make us less competitive and it would take our largest employers uh, and these young startup companies and all the things that you're showing right now on your screen and it would really make us non-competitive. So I encourage people to you know, get on our site. You know, and if you're a business owner, or you're a high tech person, you want to get involved, please do because you know, the pictures you're showing, I saw that when I was the ambassador in New Zealand. Uh, it, what China's trying to do, change the law of the air and law of the sea by building and militarizing islands, uh, manipulating their currency, stealing your intellectual property, doing forced corporate sales, shutting off their internet. I mean, these are the things that we obviously can't do, but they will do to get a tactical and technical advantage, and it's wrong. Well, I wish I had asked this question earlier in the interview the, the, about the competitiveness coalition of which you are the chair. Would you come back at a future date and tell us more about this. It sounds like a really interesting proposition. Well, we can talk about anything you want, anytime, anywhere. So listen, get out and vote, all you folks that are watching, and let's go make a difference this fall and take back this country. God bless. Cheers. Scott Brown, former Massachusetts senator, really appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to you coming back. Thank you.